I'll be talking on forgiving others, part two. And the first one was part one. Everybody say, forgiving others. The message of forgiveness is the fundamental message of the gospel. Jesus came to do just one thing. To bring the forgiveness of God unto us because of the sin we committed in the Garden of Eden. God created man, put him in that beautiful garden and said, don't eat of a particular tree. If you do, you will die. Romans 6, verse 23 said, the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. The wages of sin is death. If you commit this sin, you die. And you die perpetually. It's not, you can't redeem your dead. You are dead. A man ate it and died. He couldn't redeem his death, redeem himself from that debt of death that was placed upon him. Jesus came to redeem us from the dead, to pay for that sin that we committed, to take away the sin to pay for the debt that brought debt, debt. He came to pay for the debt, to pay the debt that brought debt. That's why he came. And having done that, the Bible now says we are be redeemed. So when we say there is a debt you are owing, you couldn't pay, like the choir sang the first service. Is that was the sin? The sin that took us to hell. The sin that is taking every human being to hell who don't accept Jesus Christ, who did not receive the forgiveness Christ gave to us. Now what we are talking about forgiving others is that if God so forgive us our sins, why will you not forgive those who sinned against you? In Matthew 18, 21 and 22, we saw where Peter said, how often Shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Is it several times? Jesus said, No, not several times, but several times, 70 times, which is 490 times. That means forgiveness is not numbered, forgiveness is countless. You must forgive and keep forgiving and keep forgiving and keep forgiving and keep forgiving. There is no time you say, I won't forgive you again. That is what Christ taught us. Why? Because you have enjoyed greater forgiveness than the one you are giving, forgiving any other person. You have enjoyed greater forgiveness. So Christ told us that you have Enjoy that kind of forgiveness. And that every Christian should have this forgiveness as an attitude, as a lifestyle. Forgiveness is a lifestyle. And then we read the story of a man. Jesus told us that beautiful story. In Matthew 18 23, he said, The kingdom of heaven. Is like this. That is, whoever we make heaven is like this. That a man was working for his master. If you keep reading. And then they say, want to take record of what you are owing. Only for them to take record and find that he was owing 10,000 talents. The Living Translation Bible says is 20, I mean, 20, uh, 10 million dollars. Praise God. Ten million dollars. We translated that to English, to Nigeria naira, which is so valueless. If a naira is more than five hundred naira, I'm just estimating five hundred naira. That became five billion. He was owing five billion to his master, and the master wanted to sell him, sell his wife, sell his children, sell all the properties he have he had, so as to pay the debt. The man went to the master and screamed and shouted and, and begged and worshipped him. Said, Master, please have mercy on me. I will pay. I will pay. You can't take me. Take my wife. Take everything. And then he said, All right. In verse 27, 
The Bible said the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion. And he loosed him from that debt. And he forgave him the debt. Everybody say forgave. He forgave him the debt. He said, okay, from now, you are no longer owing me $10,000 or what we call 20 million pounds. I mean, dollars or what we call 5 billion naira. You are no longer owing me. I forgive you completely. But then something happened. After you have been forgiven like that, if you now read further, from verse 28, he said, the same man that they forgave me like that, he has somebody else who was owing him a hundred pence. Not talent, hundred pence. Hundred pence was seen to be an equivalent of twenty dollars. That is about ten thousand naira. He was owing him that small nothing compared to five billion naira. Twenty thousand, I mean twenty million or ten million pounds. I mean dollars. Ten thousand naira was owing him. He grabbed the man by the throat. He said, you must pay me. Everything you must pay me. If you don't pay me, you will see what I would do. He took him and threw him to prison. Then when the man that forgave him that big debt had it, he was mad. He was angry. He said, what? He called him. He said, you are a wicked man. Hallelujah. Look at from verse 31. So when his first servant saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. All that people, they saw the wickedness he did. They went and told the man that forgave him. Look at it, what happened in verse 32. Then that man who forgave him, he said, thou wicked servant. Everybody say wicked servant. I forgive you everything that you owe. I mean, you can't forgive somebody else. And that's what God is saying. That the sin, Jesus paid the debt for your sin. He died on the cross to take away your sin. To forgive you the sin of going to hell. And he now demands, if he can forgive you that kind of sin, you should forgive your brothers who sin against you, no matter the level of sin. Forgive, forgive 490 times in a day. If you don't forgive your brother, your sister, or your anybody, say you are a wicked person. The Bible describes you as wicked. I forgive you all that debt because you asked for it. Then in verse 33, he said, How comes that you will not also have compassion on a fellow servant like you? God forgive you. You cannot forgive your fellow brother, your fellow sister, your fellow uh, uh, somebody. You can't forgive. Ah, he made him very angry. He said, I pity you. You can't pity others. Then in verse 34, what did he say? And his law was wrought. What did he do? He delivered him to the tormentors. Everybody say tormentors. Till he should pay all that was due to him. In other words, the forgiveness was withdrawn. The forgiveness that is no longer owing five billion naira was withdrawn. Each, and then he was given to the tormentors to torment him. Brethren, this is a major, major challenge that we have today in the body of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Tormentor. Let's look at, let's dwell on this verse 34 for a while. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Here was somebody who was forgiving completely, but they withdrew everything. When you don't forgive people, the, the forgiveness God has given you is as good as withdrawn. You open yourself up to Satan to torment you. Listen to me. How many of you know there are people, let me give you an example. There are people, even before they became born again, they used to see what will happen before it happened. You have that evidence here. Yeah? Before something will happen, they will see it. They will know it. 
particularly bad things, they see it before it happens. There are people who have that thing, that spirit. They see it before it happens. Anything that want to happen, they will see it. Any bad thing, if somebody will die, they will see it. If somebody will have accident, they will see it. And they see things that will happen. Sometimes, when they begin to see too much, if they are not born again, they become herbalists. Are you hearing me? They begin to carry some divination. They throw some things on ground. Bang, bang, bang. They read, they read the cloth drawn on the ground. Some they read sands. Have you heard all those stories before? Huh? They read all those things. They say, it's herbalist. You go there. Say, Baba, uh, what is the oracle saying? Bang, 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 bang. Oracle say, have you heard that kind of story before? It's a spirit of divination. Spirit of what? In Acts 16, verse 16, I think that is where it is. Can you just show me? I didn't plan to say all this. Can you read it? And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of what? Divination, methods, which brought her master much gain by so saying. Where was she? She came to meet them where they were praying. The same follow Paul and us and Christ, saying, This man and the servants of the most high God will show unto us the way of salvation. He had the spirit, he said, The damn said the girl has a spirit of what? Divination. Everybody say spirit of divination. Oh, I wish you can listen to me now. There are many people who have spirit of divination. They enter church, and that spirit has not been cast away from them. So they continue the spirit of what? Divination. They keep divining. And they tell you it's God. Are you hearing me? I'm telling you this because many of you are falling into this evil. Many of you here, you are falling to it. You say, I can't even know this one. I be like, say, make I go. Eh? This is a big man of God, a big woman of God. You go there to be controlled by the spirit of what? divination and this spirit of divination they came paul had to cast that devil out of that woman spirit of divination and always they don't see good things all they see is what evil things they see death they see sickness they see accident they always see what is bad many of them come to church are you hearing me Many of them have open ministry. They carry spirit of divination. And they have a ministry. They are operating with the spirit of divination. May the Lord open your eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. We are living in the last days. The last days. The Bible says many shall be deceived. Many shall be deceived with the spirit of divination. It's paining me because there are some of you here, we establish the things of God, but suddenly you have attached yourself to the spirit of divination. You go into their meetings, they begin to divine for you. How do you know them? They divine nothing except evil. They divine nothing except what evil thing that will happen, the, the somebody that will die, the sickness that will come on you, the accident that will happen to you, the terrible thing that will happen. And that's what they divine, divine, divine continually. But they do it in the name of the Lord. May God have mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Many go for it. Some of you here, you go. You won't tell me you are going. You just go. And they tell you all those things. A woman had a spirit of divination. She was having it before she became born again. And then she entered church. And she continued using that spirit. One day she was troubled. He said, she met the man of God. He said, Pastor, why is it that anything that will happen to people, I will always know it. And it's always by bad thing. Death or accident. And, and they, he told, gave several examples of how the spirit of divination operated in her life. And then it truly happened. He said, is this spirit, is it of God? Because it's troubling her. The man said, go and ask God. And then the wife of the, of the pastor took it up, said, let's be praying. As they were praying, the pastor said, this spirit in you is not of God. Then they tried to cast out the devil. They pray, 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 the devil used to leave. Then why, one of the days as they were praying, a voice inside her, 
Say, no, leave me. My mother is wicked. My mother. So, it's because of the mother, she cannot be delivered. What happened? Her mother has seen, done something terrible against her. And she has been holding that grudge against her mother. And as long as she held on to that, that, that grudge, that complaint, she cannot be delivered. Are you hearing me? So when they now say, okay, what did your mother do? Then she now confessed. She now told them, my mother did this, did this to me. I didn't forgive her. On forgiving her, what happened? They now say, you foul devil, get out. And the spirit left immediately. I will say immediately. As long as she has not forgiven her mother, the tormentor was tormenting her. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I say, are you hearing what I'm saying? There are, there are many tormentors. Many, many people, tormentors are tormenting. They are destroying you because of all forgiveness that is in your heart. Tormentors include so many things. When you have a demonic stronghold, no matter how they pray, if there is somebody you have not forgiven, that stronghold will not leave you. We just be pray, 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 pray. It will not go. If you have oppression, somebody is oppressing your life. There is somebody you have not forgiven. That oppression will not go. Say amen. Listen to me. Say amen. If you have a sickness and there are people, these are things we have prayed upon. So people are sick, sick, sick. You pray and pray and pray. No answer. The tormentor is tormenting them for not forgiving somebody who has sinned against the person. Sickness refused to go. There are many stances. When somebody, you pray, pray, the sickness is not going. As soon as you ask the person, please stick around. Who have you not forgiven? And as soon as the person thought of who he has not forgiven and says, I have not forgiven this person. The moment the person forgives, the sickness disappears. Say amen. Say amen. So many diseases, so many depression, so many trouble in the life of people happening to them because the tormentor has come on them for refusing to forgive. Forgiveness is not optional. Forgiveness is mandatory. All forgiveness gives Satan a foothold in your life. All forgiveness. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. Jesus taught us. He said, forgive as you have. Uh, he said, you will be forgiven as you have for, forgiven somebody. That is how God will forgive you. He said, if you don't forgive those who sin against you, who will, how will God forgive you? You know, he was teaching us how to pray. He said, after this man, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That is Matthew 6, verse 9. Verse 10 says, what? Thy kingdom come, that will be done in earth, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, go on, and forgive us. Can we read verse 12 together? Come on, read verse 12 together. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. If you don't forgive your debtors, you all will not be forgiven. The one forgiving before will be withdrawn. Tormentors will be sent to torment you. This is so important. You want prayer of the righteous to be answered? Like mommy said, don't pray prayer of pretense. If there is all forgiveness in your hand, there is somebody you have never forgiven. It's a prayer of pretense. Your prayer will not be answered. The tormentor will be tormenting you. If you do not see God, does he answer prayer again? But meanwhile, you have somebody in your heart. Forgiveness is not optional. It's compulsory. Anybody that sin against you, forgive the person. Touch somebody close to you if you can touch the person or you point hand. Say, forgive that person. Look at the person eyeball to eyeball. Say, oh God, forgive that person. Madam, forgive that person. Uh, forgive them. Uh, I know say they pay you. Forgive. Forgive. Forgive now. Uh, I say forgive. Praise the name of the Lord. In Mark chapter 11 verse 25 and 26. 
Mark 11, 25 and 26. And when you start praying, what do you do? What do you do is you do? Forgive. When you start praying, forgive. For if ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. When you start praying, forgive. If you don't forgive, your Father in heaven will not forgive your own trespasses. Look at verse 26. He said, but if ye do not forgive, read it now, read it. You, can, you went to school, want to go. But if you, will, you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So what can stop God from forgiving your sins? If you don't forgive somebody as his own, are you hearing me? I'm not saying the person has not offended you, Oga. Uh, madam, uh, he has offended you. I know he's painful. Ah, how can he do that kind of thing? Is he not a Christian like me? Well, uh, is he, if I was the one that introduced me to Christianity, he called himself a pastor and he's being which kind of pastor like that? Uh, uh, yeah, you, uh, I, I agree with you. Forgive. After all those things, what do you do? Forgive. See, this Christianity no easy. See, seriously, it's not easy. But forgiveness is demanded. Look at it. Then. If you do not forgive, neither will your help Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Can you imagine if God only forgive your trespasses? Who else? God Himself will not forgive you for not forgiving somebody. You didn't forgive your husband. You didn't forgive your wife. You didn't forgive your children. You didn't forgive your parents. You didn't look at that one I gave you an example. Of. She could not be delivered. The tormentors came and said, We are tormenting her. Forgive us. Very important. Let them go. You can always say, Father, I forgive because of the great forgiveness you have given to me. You brought me out of darkness into your marvelous light. I was a nobody. I was a sin on the way to hell. You forgave me my sin of going to hell and brought salvation my way. Right now, my way to heaven. What can somebody do to me that I cannot forgive? No matter what it is, forgive. I beg you, all of you here. There are a lot of miracles that will come out that we bring come out because of forgiving somebody this, this day. We are talking about prayers. That many prayers are based on. He said he was teaching them how to pray. Remember, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 12, he was teaching them how to pray. And in the course of teaching them how to pray, as we are talking about praying, prayer of the righteous, he told them, Forgive. You don't forgive others. Your father will not forgive you your trespasses. Forgive them. Father, preach upon this word in the name of Jesus. Even those that died, that sin against you, what do you do to them? Huh? He said, if person is dead now, uh, even in his death, forgive. There are people that died that have sinned against you. You still do what? Forgive them. Say, that man is good. He died. If I, it's his wickedness that killed him. Maybe you are doing enmity before the man died. With the day you had he died, you bought a bottle of alcohol. Beer, you decide drink it. <laughs> oh, my enemy, when they fight me. Now, so God will kill them one by one. This one don't go. I better give me drink. <laughs> oh. You are going against the word of God. Forgive. Even the person is dead and you are still angry. Forgive the person. This forgiveness we are talking about, it does not need somebody coming to beg you for forgiveness. He said, he didn't ask for forgiveness. Now will I forgive him? She didn't ask for forgiveness. Now will I forgive her? No, you don't need to. The person does not need to ask for forgiveness. This is where it's difficult. Are you hearing me? Once you know you are angry with the person and he's making you, Lord, because of the way you forgive me. Everybody said, because you are forgiving me, my sin of going to hell, I forgive this person. Because when the Bible says, God will not forgive your trespasses, the only thing you think about is, uh, me, I didn't, there is no trespass against God that God will not forgive me. I didn't do anything against God. No, you did. He said, even the one he forgave you before will be withdrawn. That is the worst. I did, you'll be subject to tormentors to torment you. A lot of prayers are not being answered because of unforgiveness. 
Please take note of these things I'm saying. I'm about to run. Them. Praise God. When God began to open my eye to this thing, I was shaking. I began to pray. Say, Lord, it's a hard message. If people must obey it, and not just hear and go away. If you must put it to practice, then it's a hard message. But we need to hear it. It's not an entertainment message. It's a message that you go home, you begin to meditate, begin to take godly decision on all of these things. You know, there are some signs that show that no forgiveness. Because when people say, can they forgive? The Bible showed us where we read earlier on in, in, in Matthew 18, 35. Let's read it again before I give you a few points and we close. In Matthew 18, 35, everybody say, read it, want to go. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. He says, that is how my Father in heaven, God himself, will do to you. If from your heart, everybody say from my heart, put your hand on your chest and say from my heart, I forgive. If from your heart, you don't forgive everyone. Trespasses. Everyone, not some people. Everyone that trespasses against you, from your heart, you forgive them. From your heart. Some people forgive from their, from their head. Like mom will try to quote me. From their head. That is not a serious matter. The Bible says in Psalm 15 verse 1, Psalm 14 verse 1, a fool says in his heart, I mean in his heart, there is no God. What comes from your heart is out of the heart proceeds the issues of life. Proverbs said. Say, guide your heart with all diligence. The whole thing is from your heart. Anything, any forgiveness that is not from your heart is not pure. Somebody will even ask you, uh, you had the message of forgiveness now. Have you forgiven? Huh? <laughs> I don't forgive now. If I don't forgive, do you think I can, I, can, I, I, I can be related with the person? Do you think we can even talk? Do you think uh, you go stay in my house? You think uh, you are not, for, not forgive her, but it's not from where it's not from the heart, it's from the head. Head forgiveness is not acceptable. That's why Jesus Himself said it. Let that forgiveness come from where from your hearts. Look at it there. He says, The fool saying is okay. That is another definition of fool. If you are looking for a definition of fool, it's very simple. Anybody who says in his heart, There is no God. You know how we know you are saying from your heart there is no God. Where from your, from your, you are doing things that are against God. It means that you are living on your, from your head, not from your heart. So, it is important. But then, how do we know that you are forgiving? You have not forgiven from your heart. There are some evidences that show that there is no forgiveness from the heart. Number one. When the heart is still grieved against the offender, the person that offended you, each time you see the person, you are angry. You have not truly forgiven. Did you hear what I just said? If maybe it's a member of this church, as the person is coming to pass this gate to enter church, you go and pass that gate so that you will not see. That shows there is no forgiveness from where? from the heart so that forgiveness is not acceptable when you see the person you are grieved something gets you no stupid you are angry number two when the offended still complains or murmur to others about the offender philippians 2 verse 14 say let there be no murmuring or complaint among you when you are still complaining the person that offended you anytime you see somebody you are complaining about that person this person did me this this person did me this and this person, it means you have not forgiven are you hearing me when you complain about the offender to anybody that comes your way you have not forgiven you have not forgiven from your heart ah that brother that sister, you know what he did to me? You have not forgiven from your heart. And it can cause the tormentors to be tormenting your life. From what we read in Matthew 18, 18 verse 35. From your heart. Number three, evidence that shows there is no forgiveness. When the, the, the former sins 
is or are recalled in the outbreak of a new offense. When the former sin is recalled in the outbreak of a new offense, what does that mean? If the person who, who did something wrong against you, you forgive the person. If he does another bad thing, you say, uh -huh, you don't do it again. On the 5th of January 2018, you did this thing. Every January, you always do something. Last year again, fifth of even during coronavirus, you did it. Last year, you did it. This year again, look at my phone. I record everything down. You can't you can't deny it. You can't deny it. I the Bible says <laughs> love takes no record of evil. Keeps no record of what? Evil. Many of you, your phone now, you have kept so many evil. All the things people did against you, you wrote them down. You say, ah, I can't, I can't. I can send the text. He said to me, Pia! no forgiveness. Are you hearing me? You keep records of evil. Anytime uh, when the person comes again, you remember all the one he did before you say you are forgiven. You bring all back and say, ah, you have done it again. No forgiveness. Those are evidence that show there is no forgiveness. Another one is when there is malice between the offended and the offender. When you are still keeping malice with the person, is it too painful? You are keeping malice. Hope you know the meaning of malice. You are not talking to you are not on talking terms. You used to phone each other, you don't phone again. You used to send text message, you don't send again. You used to greet each other, you don't greet again. You know there are some husband and wife they wake up in the morning, no greeting. They possibly slept on the same bed, the same house. They wake up. <laughs> ah! And you want to pray, and God will answer your prayer. That is terrible, evil. Look at First Peter three verse seven. I think that's where it is. And First Peter three verse seven. He said, "Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife." Tell somebody close to you, honor your wife. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel as, and as being held together of the grace of God, of life. Oh, today God explained this cup to me. It was very powerful. That I may held together of the grace of life with my wife. We are held together. We are co-signatory to the grace of life. If grace must work in us, when I sign, she will sign. Then heaven will give us what we want. We are held together of the grace of life. He said that your prayers be not what? Hindered. When you, don't, when you are in enmity, you are keeping malice, your prayer will be hindered. Brother, your prayer will be hindered. Sister, if you are the one of your husband, your prayers will be what? Hindered. Will not be answered. If you are keeping malice. Unforgiveness makes you to keep malice. If you forgive, hey, hello, good morning, how are you? He said, hey, get out. Okay, but at least I've greeted you. <laughs> praise God. I say praise God. Finally. When the offender is directly or indirectly waiting for the offender to suffer harm. When the offended is directly or indirectly waiting for the offender to suffer harm. What does that mean? Do you know there are people when they do something wrong against you, you are waiting for evil to happen to them. Are you hear what I'm saying? You are waiting for the offender, the person that offended you. You are waiting for something bad to happen to the person. Then you have not forgiven. You say, you do me this, okay. You will see. If any time you say you will see, it means you have not forgiven the person. And you are waiting for the person to see, even if you didn't say so. When something bad happened to the person, you say, yeah, all oh, my enemy. Now, so some of these pray, dangerous prayers you are praying, you should be careful. Are you hearing me? Some of them will make the tormentors to torment you. Why you are praying for them to torment your, 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 your who? Your enemy. Did the they end up tormenting you because of unforgiveness? Every enemy of my soul. And you have somebody in mind. No. I know there are some people we argue on this because there are so many different teachings on this. Are you hearing me? But when it comes to the message of forgiveness, 
This is what the Lord is saying to us. You keep somebody in your mind and you say, every enemy of my soul, die by fire, die by fire, die by fire, die, 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 die. You see, God say, why? Forgive now. If you have somebody in mind, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Are you hearing me? The enemy of your soul is not flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That the Ephesians 6, verse 12. Brethren, let's can we look at the Bible at all? Why looking at what people are doing and not looking at what the Bible is saying? Well, I like that statement. Stop looking at what people are doing. Start listening to what the Bible is what? He's saying, let's listen. He said, You wrestle not against flesh and blood, but you are wrestling against flesh and blood. I'm not saying God cannot fight people. Can, vengeance belongs to Him. You are not to take vengeance. Vengeance belongs to who? Let God fight your battle. If you want to fight people, He knows how to fight, but you are not to fight for Him. Then you begin to create enmity with people, all forgiveness in your heart. You see that you are angry, you are mad. I have seen things. Oh, I saw a video where. Because of prophecy, they gave somebody in one of these uh, 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 spirit of divination homes. They went and started fighting their mother. Some boys, they, took, they told her their mother is, their, is the witch that is not allowed them to prosper. They say, Mama, leave us alone. You, you, wait till, if we progress, not be for your soul. Not, is it not for your be for your own uh, good? Why you go, go, go Mama, why you go hold our life? Wait till we do now. You know good now. You know like any better thing. All your children, nobody is doing well. You just hold us with your witchcraft. Mama said, I'll not be witch. You be witch. You go clean before. Before you know, they start beating Mama, beating Mama. Mama closed, let her, went off her. Her breasts were, ex, 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 uh, you know, were open. They start beating her. Leave us alone, Mama. Leave us alone, Mama. Leave us. <laughs> Mama said, I'll not be witch. I'll not kill you now. Now, now I'll go kill you now. Prophecies, false prophets, they are everywhere. 